So our, our next speaker will be uh, Professor Williams. Uh, Professor Williams received his PhD in political science from the University of Minnesota and has taught at the at Pennsylvania State University, the University of Michigan, the University of Illinois, and the London School of Economics. His current research interests focus on the role of a changing media environment in shaping citizenship in the United States. He has received funding for this research from the National Science Foundation and the Cultures of Consumption Research Program at Birkbeck College, University of London. So without further ado, I will go ahead and bring up Professor Williams. So, can you all hear me? Okay. Um, so, I found, I mean, I was terribly honored to be asked to, to do this. Um, even though the first email was addressed, had another name on the header. <laughs> and so, I thought, oh, they just sent it to the wrong person. Um, and then, either that's true, and they you know, said, no, no, they meant to say it. But either way. Um, <laughs> And the real challenge is when I was told you have to do this in like 10 to 12 minutes because I see some of you who have been my students in the audience and it takes me, you know, 20 minutes to clear my throat at the beginning of the class. So, so I found myself really, you know, if, if I had half an hour, I would have just scribbled some notes and winged it, I suppose. Um, but I really had to craft what I'm, what I'm doing, what I wanted to talk about. And so for three years, I've been teaching um, a course on the HBO series, The Wire. How many of you have seen The Wire? Oh, okay. Um, and teaching that course has been one of the most rewarding experiences I've had as a college professor. And the response from students it has been amazing. I mean, I for a course that's capped at 30, I have like 90 people on the waiting list. Um, and I don't know whether that's because they think, oh, well, I can take a course and watch television, or um, it's the wire. I think it's the wire. And, and so when I was asked to talk at this event, I realized that what I really wanted to talk about were the lessons of the wire, what I've learned teaching it for three years. And I want to start with a little clip that sets the table, as it were, for my talk. Um, President Obama, when he was still a candidate, was asked what his favorite television show was, and he answered The Wire. And when he was asked who his favorite character was, he answered Omar, who is like everybody's favorite character. In some ways. Now, Omar, you should know if you haven't watched The Wire, is a gay stick-up boy. And you will see um, he is testifying here. I would also say about the meaning of life and money that Omar, the philosopher, at one point after he was ripping off a, uh, a poker game, said that money does not have owners, only spenders. Um, so I don't that. <laughs>
economy, what it is, you can really consider.
than Denmark, Norway, Finland, Canada, Sweden, Germany, Great Britain, and France. Um, put another way, 42% of American men with fathers who were in the bottom fifth of the earning curve stay there. In contrast, only a quarter of Danes and Swedes and 30% of Britons born into the lower income bracket will die in that same bracket. Recent work by well-respected political scientists at Yale, Berkeley, and Northwestern show how this increase in inequality and decline in opportunity came about because those at the very top were able to shape the government policies most important to them. In short, they rewrote the rules of the game. Now, it's easier to see how the rules are rigged when it comes to the victims of the game or the selfish one-tenth of one percent at the top, or however you want to slice it. It is harder when we are the beneficiaries of this game. And that includes all of us sitting here. We all like to think of ourselves as hard-working, smart, attractive, and deserving of what we have. We earned it. Our success is a measure of our character. But referencing another game, baseball, Molly Ivins, the wonderful Texas journalist, described George Herbert Walker Bush, the elder Bush, as someone who claims he hit a triple but was actually born on third base. <laughs> the Wire teaches us that we too are in the game. We might not have been born on third base, but we were born on first or second and maybe moved to third. But you know what I mean. We chose our parents wisely. Yet the wire shows that our good fortune, that the rules benefit us, and it is just that, good fortune, comes at the expense of the less fortunate. Our wins are financed by the losses of others. Making believe that no matter where they start, anyone can work hard in life and rise to the top is both bad social science and it also legitimates a system of what Jonathan Kozel, describing public education, calls savage inequalities. Of course there are exceptions. Some remarkable individuals do manage to make it from the bottom to the top. Maybe there are some sitting here today. The problem is that we focus so much attention on the exceptions that we avoid the actual reality. In the words of law professor Michelle Alexander, key to America's understanding of class is the persistent belief, despite all evidence to the contrary, that anyone with the proper discipline and drive can move from a lower class to a higher class. We recognize that mobility may be difficult, but the key to our collective self-image is the assumption that mobility is always possible. So failure to move up reflects on one's character. Centrally implicated in this focus on the exceptions, of course, are television, film, and especially journalism. By demonstrating the possibilities for addressing difficult, systemic, and institutional issues, the wire shows just how deficient or complicit the rest of the mass media are. Think about it like cigarette warning labels. It's as if most of the focus of the media is on the 96-year-olds who smoked for their whole life and never got lung cancer. Like the real labels, however, the wire warns us of the actual dangers of rising inequality and declining opportunity. What this means is that those who benefit from a rigged system, a rigged game, like us, have an obligation to those who are disadvantaged by that same rigged game. Of course you all worked hard and are remarkably talented. I'm not denying that. But many of the most interesting, smartest, and hardworking characters in The Wire wind up dead or without a viable future. 
For anyone who is a fan, think about Stringer Bell, the drug dealer who goes to community college to learn business and is desperate to, make, to move his money into legitimate businesses. He winds up, spoiler alert, dead. Um, but there's also Wallace, Bodie, Dookie, Randy, Michael, and then the detectives, McNulty and Lester Friedman and Bunny Colvin. The list goes on and on. Giving back, fighting growing inequality and the institutional obstacles that stand in the way of a fair game for those at the bottom is not something that you should do because it makes you feel good or even worse, because it's a nice resume builder. Nor is it something you can choose to not do, simply because you don't want to, or you think you deserve everything you have. Not working to change the game in all its wider consequences is not only wrong, it's not fair. No, we don't. Okay.